Hey guys, it's Chilcast, and we're continuing where we left off on Katawa Shoujo. We just had sex, but now Hanako's acting all weird. I hope I didn't fucking break her, because it's the last thing I want to do. I like her, but I don't know if, if this was the right move in our relationship. Anyway, let's continue. I feel a tap on my shoulder. I look up to see Suzuna and Misha looking at me. Curiosity about the situation written on their faces, mixed with a slight apologetic look at the idea they were partially responsible for what just happened. You guys didn't have sex with her? I did. Maybe Misha would from the rumors I'm hearing in the YouTube comment section. Dot dot dot. Hey Chan, if, if we can help at all, I just I just shake my head. This isn't a matter for them, and from Shizun's expression and the tone of Misha's voice, I think they know the same thing. Misha, you fucked up, and that's a I can't I hate the face you give because it's a cute dog face, and I'm like, oh Misha, and then she's like, Meh, and I can't do that. Shizun acknowledges my response and gives a solemn bow before making her way out of the room. Misha soon follows her out, obediently following her role Shizun's shadow. Uh, just a quick side note, I really like Japan and the fact that they don't shake hands, they bow. Sometimes I don't like shaking people's hands. They, where have people's hands have been? They've been either in the crapper or in the urinal. I like the bow better. I'm just saying that. That's something I can get used to. I pick myself up, books and pens in hand, and place them inside Hanako's desk. With the classroom now empty, I end up leaning against her desk and thinking to myself in silence. Oh god, long soliloquy. It feels like there's a complete emotional disconnect between Hanako and I. <clears throat> we haven't known each other for all that long, and despite wanting to start going out with her, I really don't know how much how, how Hanako views things. She just can have a warped perception about everything. I've been studying as hard as I can for- That's a lie, Hanako. Don't even fucking- I mean, Hasao. It's a lie. You haven't been studying. You've been fucking. Alright? You're like a little fuck bunny. Trying to procreate with Hanako. Trying to have little honeys everywhere. Hi, honeys. I still don't feel like I have any real sense of direction behind it. I tried to be a friend of Hanako, even if I couldn't tell her my feelings, and all I've done is drive her apart. I couldn't even write a letter back to the one girl that ever loved me. Awakano. You didn't love her. She was she was a puppy love. What should I do? What can I do? I simply don't know the answer to either of these questions. I do know that nobody else can help me with it, Elmo. Just going back to the way things were enough between that uh, were enough to make me happy, but I know that can never happen. Something changed between us last night. Maybe it changed beforehand and just came to a head then. I know there's a wall that Hanako has between me and her. I've been hitting that wall every time I try to interact with her on every level. But you, you can't, man. You can't fucking expect her to open up yet. You've known her for like eight days, and you already had sex. So, chalk one up to the gods and fucking carry on with your life, man. But now I'm beginning to think that I have my own wall between us just as much as she does. She had to practically drag me past out of me. My past out of me. And mine was much less traumatic than hers. I don't know. She burned. You died. It's debatable. It really is. I want to say it's because I haven't had long to adjust since my heart attack, but I know full well that it would just be an excuse. The one time I can recall it when it finally felt like she was opening up to me from her own accord when we were playing billiards in the city. I was the one who stopped her from going further. You fucked up, Asel. You done fucked up. I want to know Hanako better. I want to save our friendship, if not begin a real relationship with her. <laughs> Kids these days. My mind begins to take as I sit against her desk, thinking to myself in the empty classroom that we've spent so much time in together. I have to talk to Hanako. And the music stops. As my mind races through my head, the music is no longer in sync with it. I'm left curiously awaiting the future. Or I could just cut class, yeah. <laughs> that works. I pace around the park, feelings of anxiety rolling over me. Every so often I reach in my pocket to take out my phone, but each and every time I hesitate and end up slipping it back in. If this were any normal situation, I wouldn't be cutting classes. Unfortunately, it isn't, and so I find myself in the town below, the school at the two in the afternoon. Yeah, seriously, what the hell, buddy? Cutting class is a great way to start drugs, and starting drugs is a great way to kill yourself. Fucking bastard. Ever since I met Hanako, I've been the one to initiate everything between us. The one that started conversations, went to her wherever she was, and suggested what we should do. Today, this once, I don't want to be the only one doing that. We let Lily say you had to be the guy, and she had to go to the wolves. So you listen to Lily, and people die. Simple signs. No, but Lily knows it's right. Lily is like the, the guiding mentor of both of our fucked up things. I kind of see Lily as the glue that holds our relationship together. She's like that kind of like the mother figure. I love Lily. My hand dies in my pocket once more. This time I quickly navigate to the texting menu before I have a chance to change my mind again. Hanako, if you want to talk, I'll be at the park in the town for a while. Fighting a last measure of doubt, I thumb in my message to Hanako and press the button to send it. And now I wait. My partness has been fulfilled. What happens now is, well, that's for Hanako to decide. It'd be meaningless for me to drag her here. She needs to sigh for herself if she wants to meet me. I think she wants to meet you. It's just, she needs time, man. In all honesty, I think it's like a, like a three-day thing. Like, after you have sex, you don't call for three days. If someone can confirm that rule, I'm not sure how it works. But you don't run out like you're a crazy lady. That that you don't do. So, please, guys, don't, don't do that. Or, or if you do, that's not on me. 
Ugh, the apple juice from the vending machines tastes awfully bitter as I swill it down. My grip on it can be my grip on the can has caused it to dent slightly in the middle. A sow's got the muscles. I shouldn't be this tense, but it's probably inevitable. Anako is dear to me. What happened in the last couple of days has put a lot of pressure on both of us. The idea of losing all the progress we've made is coming closer to one another and losing our friendship as a whole. Now that that's deeply unsettling. But even then I still don't know really how close we are. We may have had sex, but before that, all I knew is we were friends. Maybe we were more than that, but if so, I never realized it. Because you never talked to her. You, God, you should have put an end to it. I know, I don't know, that's like just the mind thinking. Like, you know, you see a woman, she's undressing herself, and, you know, there she is in her nude. And then you go up to her like, all right, well, I guess this is my time to use my stuff that I have. Sorry, I thought I heard something banging on the door. So, yeah, my stuff that I have, but you can't do that. You know, you gotta work it out. If this was the first time, maybe like, no, I'm not ready, Hanako. I'm ready to learn about you and your past. Maybe that's why I feel so uneasy right now, though. I don't understand, Hanako, despite all the time we've spent together. The mains are ticking by, and I still have no idea whether she'll show up. Holy shit! <laughs> okay, alright, cool. She showed up. Hey, Sal? I paused for a moment, almost not believing that I'm hearing the voice I'm hearing. I dropped the can and stand up with a start. Aww. Hanako? We look at each other for a few seconds before Anako becomes too embarrassed to maintain eye contact and begins to nervously fiddle with the roughly cut lock of her hair covering the side of her face. <sighs> when I went to see that Hanako in the room by myself after a breakdown, I had no idea what to say. That was fine then. All either of us wanted was each other's presence. Now though, now I feel like I need to talk to her directly. Yeah, you gotta be the man. You gotta wear the pants, buddy. I want to break down this wall between us before it forces us apart for good. Hana Hanako, I... What we did that night, how, how should I interpret that? Hanako stops playing the music, and with her hair, and she looks at me. Her, ass cast, her, her head casts slightly downwards. She looks ashamed, which is probably a good mirror of how I'd look now if I weren't so concerned. I don't think she looks ashamed. I think she just looks like... Penetrated. Like you penetrate her feelings. I... I thought you... You might eventually go away if I was only someone you needed to protect. I thought that if I let you... Do that... You might see me as someone more than that. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. This is bad. So she... That was pity sex? I can't do pity sex. My first reaction is disbelief, but... I did do it with her, after all. I had plenty of opportunities where I could have stopped things, stepped back and questioned what we were doing. In the end, though, I didn't. A horrible feeling rises in the pit of my stomach. She offered herself to me because of what I thought she wanted? Uh, what, what she thought I wanted? And now it feels like I took advantage of her. She may have been willing, but only under false prim... Oh god, I just- that's like rape! But like consensual rape, but still rape! Oh god, it's a mental rape. I've never been good at hiding my emotions from physically showing, and now is no different. Hanaka looks down once more, a strange mixture of depression, regret, and sickness written to her face. Oh man. Oh, thick silence hangs in the air, save for the breeze blowing through the trees around us. I knew you couldn't look at me that way. Hanaka's words are said in a little more than a whisper, seemingly direct just as much as herself as to me. In what way? What, what do you mean? All I ever was to you was a useless person. Just someone to protect. Someone like a child. She knows. I want to be more than you than that. But after so long, I got used to it. You fucked it up, man. The tone of her voice is unlikely, unlike any I've heard her use before. She sounds disgusted, not at me, but at herself. A after I came out of my room, I saw that you had started drifting away. I, but I trusted Lily! Lily said to drift away! Lily said that I should give her room! What uh, the fuck? The fucking internet fucked me! The internet said to trust Lily! What the fuck, guys? You broke Hanako! I felt like I was going to lose you because you wanted somebody you could have that kind of relationship with. You were more quiet in school than before, and you were getting on so well with Yuko, I thought... Thought that I might lose you. She thought I was bored of her? Because I wanted a romantic relationship? But but we're friends, right? I, I wouldn't just abandon you like that, even if you were saying was true. Friendship was something I thought I'd given up on. I stopped believing in others. After what happened after the accident... Oh, here we go with the accident again. Can't you fucking move on? I feel sorry and bad for you. But now, now I don't know what I feel about anymore. I feel sick in my stomach that you let me do that. I feel disgusted that I did it. I feel betrayed by Lily because apparently you didn't like the fact that I drifted away from you, what Lily suggested. Which the internet told me to say. Before the accident happened, I got on well with people and other children. 
I didn't have many friends, but I didn't mind because I treasured the ones I had. Afterwards, though, I was called names by the others and teased a lot. It hurt really deeply, Sal. The teachers tried to help, but they couldn't do much, and even many of them recoiled just to the sight of me. Among those calling me names and teasing me were the ones I thought were my closest friends. From then on, I believed that it didn't matter if nobody else acknowledged me. All my existence ever did was make people troubled. After all, it was easier if I just didn't exist. But after meeting Lily, and then you, I, I tried, but I couldn't make myself think that way again. All that time, she didn't trust me. She thought just like everyone else in her life had that, I, that she was worthless. Someone to throw away when she got bored of being with her. Uh, that does hurt. That's one kind of person I never, ever wanted to be seen as. Because I know better than most people just how horrible it feels to be thrown away by those who thought I liked th Those who I thought liked me. Yeah, I know, buddy. I know, Sal. We all, we all deal with that in life, and it sucks when you think friends are friends, but they don't turn into friends. And But, you know, that's... That's part of growing up and moving on, and hopefully you learn from the experience. It just sucks that Anako had had it so tragic where she can never trust anyone ever again. But I understand where she's coming from. It's hard. When you have that trust broken, I don't know. It's, uh... It's kind of weird. I had someone very close to me in my life just kind of just get up and leave one day. And that, you know, that kind of screwed me up a bit, where... It's hard to, to trust people, I guess. I mean, that's why maybe I look to the internet more, because it's it's a place where you can trust someone, but at arm's length, you you don't have to see them 24-7. And I guess that's my own personal thing I gotta get over. That, you know, I gotta stop keeping people at arm's length. But that's... I guess that's my own gripe in life. And I guess I can understand what Hanako's saying. And on a personal level, I don't know why I'm telling the internet this, I don't, I don't tell people this. Uh, but yeah, that's... I guess, you know, it's, I understand where she's coming from. And I guess it hurts a bit more knowing that that's what she treated me as. Because I guess that's how I see how sometimes I treat people. You know, I, I feel like they're going to screw me over when maybe they're not trying to. Let's continue with the story. This just took a weird twist. She's cracking for the memories she's bringing up. I feel useless, completely unable to console her. In a strange way, though, I'm almost thankful that she's allowing me to know this. That wall between us is going away, even if it hurts so badly to bring it down. Hanako, if, if you just told me... Was I wrong? Of, of course you... Of course she wasn't. Hanako wasn't wrong. It's difficult to force myself to admit this, but I know trying to deny is pointless. To me, and, and to Lily, she was someone we tried to protect. She'd become to me what I'd become to my friends after my heart attack. A broken person. I liked her. Possibly even loved her. But I never acted on that precisely because I thought she was so fragile. I mean, I don't look at you that way now. Yeah, well that's not gonna fucking help, man. The cat's out of the bag. I got worried about you after what happened to you in class, and I thought I should try to protect you. When you locked yourself in your room, I, I, I got afraid. I thought you were rejecting me, and it forced me to think a lot about different things. I wasn't rejecting you! <gasps> there she actually spoke in a, a voice. She blurts out with almost scared tone to her voice, taking me off guard. <laughs> I knew. She quickly becomes embarrassed by her outburst before cleaning her, clenching her fist and working through what she wants to say in her mind. I would never do that to... to I would never do that. Not to you. Even though I was scared, even though I tried to push you away, you still tried to get closer to me. I locked myself away because I was just a burden to you, to Lily, to everyone. Every birthday was the same. Everyone doing their best pretending I mattered. Everyone pretending everything was alright, for that one day of the year. I didn't want to exist, but they wouldn't let me. Even after meeting Lily, everything was the same. I was as useless as I'd always been, unable to do anything for her or for myself. I didn't want that to be the same to you. Lily and I were completely wrong. From what she said, everything we did for her would have only made her feel worse. Even when I thought I had to write about her was complete misjudgment. Wait, so maybe Lily was right. What a fucking Lily, she knows everything. After you locked yourself in your room, I decided to try and work out my past as well, and, and sort of at my future. I know how to deal with things I lost by coming to Yumaku, so I was trying to sort them out myself. I thought it would help us become better friends if I did that. Songs hangs in the air as she disappears like some Houdini trick. I try to keep looking at her, but I can't. I feel really low, and though I want to apologize, I don't know how I possibly could. I hear her take a deep breath and only look back to her after hearing her drop to the ground. Oh shit. The sound of her crying breaks my heart. I know I'm responsible for this, and I know that I can't do anything to help her. Fanako feels ashamed, and I feel all the more so. I rush to her as tears continue to roll down her cheeks, unabated, wrapping my arms around her. 
I don't care what it must look like anymore. I just want to close it right now. I'm sorry, Asao. I've messed everything up. It's fine. Everything's fine. I'm the one that should be sorry. I was meddling around behind your back and I never told you anything. I can feel my grip tightening on Hanako as my vision blurs and I can't be bothered trying to hold back now. I have to force the words out as a lump begins to stick in my throat. T to tell you the truth, Hanako, I was scared. For the first time since my heart attack, I was really scared. Asao? I lost so much when I came to Yumaku. I was... I was depending on you more than I ever thought I did. Even now I still have the hole inside me. After losing my entire life and everyone I've known, I still have losing you as well. But I'm just useless. You're my friend, Hanako. You're... You're more than that. I love you, Hanako. I love you so much, the thought of losing you frightened me so much. This is bad. I'm really letting this all out. I can't bring myself to look at her face right now. Hazel, you, you've just said the words, three words that most men don't like saying, and I, I wish you luck, buddy. I really do. Because I, love, and you are those three words that you can't take back. And if you do, well, you're a bigot. Good luck, my friend. We will see what the lines ahead lie. I'm sorry, Hazel. I can't help feeling a bit happy. For so long, that's what I wanted to hear. The last of the floodgates break. The sound of her cry permeating the air as her body jerks against mine. Did we really need to put her body jerks against mine? Anyway, I digress. We hold each other tightly, connected more closely than ever in our shared grief and our shared happiness. I don't know how things are going to be like after this. Right now, though, I don't care. There's no other person in the world that either of us could possibly share these memories and emotions with. Nobody. Well, that's a beautiful scene. That's a great scene. After dropping the dirty can to a bend next to the bench, I take a seat beside Inako. She puts away the handkerchief I gave her to clean herself up, which really hasn't helped much. Then again, I don't look much more present. I don't. I doubt I look much more presentable than her. Even now, I feel empty and a bit embarrassed over letting my emotions out in public like that. And those three fucking people were watching, and they're two stupid umbrellas. It's not bad sensation. No, oh, I. I feel. I think Kanako feels the same way too. Have you calmed down a bit? That's a really bad thing to ask. Let me tell you something, guys. Never ask a woman if she's ever calmed down a bit. Either one, she's going to treat you back with two, sarcasm, or three, what, one, sarcasm, or two, she's going to fucking jump down your throat. Never, never ask that. It's really, really bad. Trust me, take it from me. Oh, you, you popped up. Yes, thank you. For a while, we just sit and take our time before talking again to one another. We both need a little time to collect ourselves. The weather is nice at this time. The weather is nice at this time of the year. Yeah, yeah, it is. I close my eyes for a moment. Relishing the feeling of the sun's heat and the cool breeze against my face. The weather is really, really nice. You know, I don't really want to go back to classes right now, do you? She shakes her head as she finishes wiping up her eyes with her cuff. The small smile she gives is nice and a reminder of how earnest it can be. Smiling for other people might be completely normal, everyday thing. For Naka, though, she smiles so rarely and so sincerely that each time she does, I feel a sense of relief and happiness. It's true. Her smile is so... I would say heartwarming because she never does it that it kind of makes it even more special although I still feel bad about the prior scene especially if she did it for me I'm sorry for everything okay now she's becoming bipolar it's okay I think we have both a bit to be sorry for I know that I'm too shy I know you want me to be I don't think I can you could change Hanako I know that because every time I've known you, all the time I've known you, you've already changed. To be honest, just being able to sit here and talk to you like this means you've changed a lot since we first met. Heh, <laughs> logic and reasoning, Asao. Didn't think you'd be using it, but you are. But I can't be like that for, for anyone else. I don't have any plans for after school. And either. Nako's confidence begins to slide down like a slippery, sweat whale. But I think that now I can finally talk to her as an equal. I can do it because I know that we're just the same in so many ways. Just give yourself time, Anako. I think you'll be able to achieve what you want. No, I'm sure that you'll be able to do it. I can see you've been trying, and I have faith in you. And you could depend on me if you feel like you need someone to support you, you know? No, 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 no. But, but I can't ask you of that. <gasps> you can't. You can, because it's exactly what I'm asking of you. I'm going through the same thing, you know? It's called love. I thought it was called being emotionally distraught and being really crippled by feelings. But love is cool. Hanako smiles before I get off the bench and dust myself off. She does the same in short measure. I'm kind of hungry. Want to grab something to eat? She nods vigorously. The way she's smiling, the way she's acting, even just the general air she gives off. I feel as if it's the first time I've seen her genuinely happy. We both make our way into the street, walking beside each other. Asao? Yeah? I... I think I 
don't really understand you. <laughs> you don't say. I don't think I understand you either, but I believe that's fine. No, that, that works for marriages. We don't know who we are, and sure, that's going to be awesome and great. This is not a single hint of desperate despair in our words. Not understanding each other is only natural. The walls we set up between ourselves couldn't possibly be bro broken down in a single day. But that's fine. As long as we take it day by day and try to understand one another, I think everything will be okay. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. We made our boy Hassau an optimist. He came in a pessimist, then a realist. Now, he's grown up, my friends. He's an optimist. So we walked in the street, though. Hanako's eyes flicked to my face and back to the street repeatedly. Is something on your mind? You look restless. She slows before stopping completely. When I turn to meet her, she takes a long, deep breath, looking at her, f looking at my face intently. This expression, I saw it once before in her room, uh, once before in her face, just once when I actually surprised her in her room. Ah, it's like the ah, ah, ah face. I, I think I have something I need to give you. You already gave me your chastity belt and virginity. Um, you've given me more than I can ask for, Hanako. You don't need to be evasive about it. What is it? I wanted to give you this for a long time, long. But now that I need to, it's too embarrassing. Don't worry. I'll accept it, whatever it is. Just please don't be tampons. Please don't be tampons. Please don't be tampons. Oh. Oh, she gave me a smile. She gives a sweet, bashful smile for taking my shoulder in her hand. Oh. Oh, that's not it. Okay. Then please, accept my first gift to you, Hassel. Hanako? <gasps> Aww. Oh, she looks like she's from Pokemon. That's really... <sighs> well, that's Katawa Shoujo, I guess. That was good. That was cool. A little bit of a... Uh, shed a little tear. Not too many. I'm okay. I'm manly. <laughs> oh, man. That was definitely a, um... It was definitely an interesting experience. Definitely. Oh, additional art by Doomfest. <laughs> no, this was definitely a fun game. Um, I'm gonna do the other parts as well. We'll pick it up. I gotta see how I'm gonna have to do it, though. Because apparently, like, I'm not sure if Act 1 is the same. I gotta look through the comments on that other page where I asked for your feedback. Because you guys told me what to do. So I gotta look through that. And then hopefully... Oh, who's that? Look at all the concept art. Hanako. Oh, there's that smile at the end. <laughs> Can't believe she gave us a kiss at the end. That's cute. That's cute. <laughs> but thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for watching the Katawa Shoujo Hanako playthrough. We'll pick it up again with someone else. I'm Chill Chaos. You guys have yourself a lovely night.